Please help me welcome David Marcus. Thank you. What an intro. I feel like I'm 80 years old. Um, OK, so I'm here today to talk to you about the mobile opportunity. I'm not sure you have the image. Um, no, no image. OK, let me go there for a second. That's it. Should be okay. Okay. There we go. So, I was saying that I'm here to talk to you about uh, the mobile opportunity and what it means for you, for your companies, uh, for your personal lives. And um, so, let's get started. So, the first thing is, you know, how large, how big is uh, mobile an opportunity for you? So first of all, let's talk a little bit about numbers. We have today, as David pointed it out earlier on, 1.3 billion internet users today. And you know, on mobile, we're a little more. We have 3.2 billion mobile users today across the world. And it's really growing pretty, pretty fast. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, there we go. As a matter of fact, every second in China, you know, we've got four babies, four new babies that are born, and 25 new mobile subscribers. So that tells you how fast it grows and how ubiquitous it becomes. And you know, we always think about mobile, and I mean, some of you at least do think that mobile is a communication tool that helps you make calls, receive SMS messages, and uh, communicate with your loved one and your business relations. But it's turning into a mass media and probably the most personal mass media that ever existed. So, you know, if you look at the content and the content spend, this one actually surprises a lot of people. It says, how come do you sell more content on cell phones than on the internet? Everybody thinks, you know, the internet is much, much larger than the mobile world. A lot more people consume content on the internet versus the mobile world. So what's, you know, how is that possible? Well, first of all, you don't sell content on the internet. You offer it for free and you sponsor it with advertising. That's the model. And that's, you know, what every single web so-called 2.0 company starting up is focusing their effort on. Getting an audience, getting traction, and then generating revenues with the advertising that uh, sometimes Google or others provide. On the other hand, on mobile content, you pay for everything. You know, that's been the rule since uh, the very beginning. It's been very expensive. It's becoming less expensive, but everybody pays for everything on mobile. And that's why you've got this differential. To illustrate a little bit more, um, here is Kanye West's uh, latest uh, single. And you can buy it if you, you live in the UK for 79p. Uh, so full track, good quality, you know, soundtrack. And on the other hand, if you want to buy the ringtone, which is kind of, you know, shorter, low quality in the UK, well, you have to pay £3.50. So that's the rule, you know. Things on mobile are more expensive, they have a higher value perception, and people are comfortable with that. They're comfortable paying for things on mobile, and you know, the internet is free now, it's too late. So, now if you compare the two worlds, web and mobile are really two very, very, very different places. And uh, in one case, you know, you've got a big screen, a nice keyboard, a mouse, and on the other side, you've got you know, a small device with a small screen. David was telling us about the, the restrictions on the most sophisticated device today, the iPhone. Um, you still have restrictions. And I know a lot of web companies today that are trying to build models by extending usage to, to mobile and to cover the costs of delivering that content to mobile phone. They said, you know, we'll put advertising. It's the same thing. Well, no, it's not the same thing. And believe me, if you start receiving only a hundredth 
of the spam you receive in your email box or your spam box and in the form of SMS on your cell phones, you won't see it that, that way. So, yeah, this is kind of, you know, the major differences between these two worlds. Clearly, you know, two major client platforms on the web. When you build something, you build it once and millions of people can access it. Uh, for mobile, you have to build it every time, you know, for each phone, for each network, you have to deal with each of the carriers, you have to deal with all the different protocols and the lack of standardization, and you have to cope with this. And this is what I spent, you know, the past seven years working on, is, you know, trying to make the mobile world an easier place. So it's not only a difference of support media companies or technologies, it's also a different point of view. You know, on one side, you've got web people, and on the other side, you've got carriers, right? I can make fun of these guys, I was one of them. So, I'm trying to transform. Uh, still working on this. Uh, now we've got a little paradigm shift as well, which is coming thanks partly to devices. And, you know, this is really an important step for us in mobile, because suddenly you shift the whole perception. Carriers are kings, they decide which devices they're going to allow on their network, they decide who's going to deliver content on their networks, they decide of everything. And suddenly, a company creates a product that's so disruptive, that changes the whole scene, that puts them in a position to actually negotiate their terms with the carriers. So Apple today gets revenues from the carriers for data traffic, for voice calls, and actually they've got the control over everything that goes around it, and it goes exactly the opposite direction the carriers want them to, but they just don't have a choice. Carriers spent $150 billion to buy licenses for 3G in Europe, $150 billion. They spent an additional 60 to 70 billion to roll out that network. They're now talking, and that was 3G only, they're now talking about 4G. And they built this network infrastructure on the premises that they were going to deliver rich content to hundreds of millions of people, if not billions. And what's happening with the iPhone? Where are you getting your content from? You're getting your content from iTunes. You're not getting your content from the network. You're not really leveraging the data. But you still use it, because you use the, uh, the internet browser on. But the carrier doesn't see the transaction, and they pay ap Apple. So I think, you know, it's, uh, it's a real paradigm shift there. Now, let me talk about another paradigm shift. Um, this is quick. I don't know who, I mean, who knows quick? I mean, of course, <laughs> and then, and, okay, good. I, I want to talk about this a little bit because this is really changing um, the way people communicate. Uh, we had the discussion just before I went, I, I stepped on stage with uh, the sound engineer that uh, put this mic on me, and he said, you know, I'm seeing our content now delivered on, on cell phones and it's lower quality and it hurts me because, you know, I like my job, I like high quality, etc. But the problem is not only that the content is distributed, the video-rich content is distributed on cell phones. The fact is that you can now stream live from a cell phone to the web, and people can interact with you. So uh, a very good example here is Robert Scoble quick page. And you can see here that yesterday, if you were at the uh, Fondue event, you're probably somewhere on one of these videos that was streaming live while you were trying to find your bread lost in your cheese somewhere. So that's changing. It's, uh, you know, it's just changing the paradigm that it's not broadcasting, like one person communicating towards many, many people, but it's like many people communicating to everyone, multicasting. And from mobile devices, location-enabled systems will change the way we communicate. One, one point on that. It's uh, not just that I can broadcast from my cell phone, but while I'm broadcasting my video, if somebody leaves a, a comment on that video, it shows up on my cell phone. Correct. So in Davos, I was doing interviews, and my interviews were better because the audience were, was participating in that interview mm -hmm. while I was doing it. It's really remarkable. That's exactly the point of multicasting and why it's so powerful, actually. Thanks. So, you know, this is, you know, we talked about the iPhone. Um, 
the, the audience here is not really representative of mass market. And I just want to talk about mass market. I was uh, speaking on a panel at Web3 in, in December with Uriel sitting back there. And the, the, the debate was around, you know, how to go mobile, what are the opportunities? And it quickly turned around, you know, mobile is really too complicated, I don't have time. And you've got a lot of startups that uh, are trying to develop, you know, mass market solutions and they've got VCs, uh, representative of their venture capital that invested in the company sitting on their board and telling them, you know, focus, 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 Give, get more audience, get more page views, and that's the only thing you should do. And, you know, the minute they start looking at mobile and say, oh, it's too complicated uh, and I'm going to spend six months doing it. Uh, if you look at the situation in the U.S., it's even worse with the CARA program brief and, and the certification process. So uh, I just want to focus about mass market because iPhone and quick are not yet mass market. Those are trends that we need to spot and, and ride, but it's not the mass market. So we're talking about simple stuff. You know, this year, 2.3 billion SMS messages will be sent, only this year in 08. And for people saying, you know, SMS text messaging is going to be replaced by email uh, on mobile devices, by MMS, or by any other technology, well, for now, you're wrong, because it increased, even at these high numbers, it increased 20% since last year. So it's growing a lot. And this is what I want to talk to you about. It's really monetization opportunities. As I mentioned earlier, you know, most of the startups today want to grow their traffic, page views, etc. And then they want to make money, and they have an easy way. And so they use this easy way, and that's it, right? In most cases, this is the way. So I think it's great, but I think there are also complementary, additional ways, business models that can be developed around mobile that could really complement advertising. So let's look at some concrete examples. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Startle, uh, but Startle is a very, very successful uh, startup. Uh, they're based in Sweden. Um, VC backed, and what they do is, you know, the concept of paper dolls for teenage girls. You can go there and uh, design uh, the latest fashion dress for Beyonce or for stars, and uh, you design it the way you want. Extremely popular, paying site with a subscription, and uh, it's they, they haven't totally exploited the full potential of things because we're not yet at that, yet at downloading stuff. But still, they've understood one thing: their target demographics need to pay with mobile phone. Teenage girls don't have credit cards, and you know, if you want to go and ask your mother for the credit card, it's not always a 100% success ratio, right? So you need to work on other alternatives. So that's one example. Another example is Face Party. For those who are in the UK, you probably know that site. It's a pretty, you know, it's a dating website. So it's a dating website, and um, one of their core revenue stream comes from this banner on top. So basically, you've got your profile, and you text your profile name to you know, have your profile on, uh, on top of the page and get noticed, and that's how the service is called. So the cost for that, and I, I, I'm not sure you see that, the cost for that is £1.50, $3. So you text in and you pay $3 to have your, your picture displayed on top of the page for a couple of minutes. Pretty interesting. It works. Now, Facebook. Facebook faces a serious problem. Not for themselves, they're doing great, but their success rely really on the success of the platform and on their ability to generate revenues for the people developing applications for the platform. And today it's not happening. Click-through rates are really, really low, and if you build an application for Facebook, the only chance you have to monetize is on your own application page, right? So pretty slim, pretty slim monetization opportunities. And now you see companies, okay, this one is an example of an application that we're building. Um, it's going live in two weeks, and you'll be able to have fun with it. It's an application that enables you to have live chats and extend that live chat with groups uh, on your mobile uh, when you're not in front of your, your computer. But it's more for us a demo to show how you can make money 
combining a web audience with uh, mobile phone. And we have a lot of those app developers on Facebook now starting to work with us, starting to integrate mobile functions, and starting to leverage the opportunity of mobile to monetize their audience. A more practical example for people living in London uh, who probably know the cloud. The cloud is the, the biggest Wi-Fi hotspot operator in Europe. And um, they used to sell their Wi-Fi access time with credit cards. And credit cards are good, but if you're in a rush, uh, you're in an airport lounge, or you're in London City in that case, and you, want to, you have to catch a plane, or a bus, or whatever, it's too slow. Okay, okay, some of you have Google uh, Toolbar, and you can do the autofill process, which works great, but it's still a process where, you know, the fact of taking your credit card out of your wallet is painful. The fact of taking money out of your pocket is painful. Sending a text message is not painful because you don't feel your pay. So the transaction is really dematerialized, and you have a higher chance of success to generate a transaction with this method of payment. So that's the way we do it for them in, in many countries, and uh, it's, it's really extremely successful. So that was it for the, uh, the practical examples. I just want to tell you briefly about Zong, the platform that we've built, uh, because really this is what I'm focusing all of my time now on. And what we did here is just we tried to change the mobile world. We, should, we try to, you know, we're, we're frustrated to hear people saying, we can't do this, it's too complex. We can't bill users, we can't deploy a global service on cell phones because you've got too many cell phones, too many handsets. And we were really frustrated with people telling us this because we just want to transform mobile into a mass media. And it's the most wonderful mass media that you ever had. Interactive, personal, you always have it with you. So that's what we're working on. And basically, this is the situation today, you know, very different carriers with different infrastructure types, different technology, different protocols. They don't want to talk to you. Um, and then you've got hundreds of devices down there. Uh, you know, the little example we saw with Quick earlier on only works on Nokia Series 60. So if you've got any other phone, it doesn't work. It's not mass media. So what we're trying to do is just make it simple. And we worked a lot, and we believe that uh, We've got uh, a pretty good shot at it. So you've got one interface, you can cover half a billion subscribers. And uh, we're still working on expanding the API. There's a lot more coming up in the, in the next few months. And our goal is to end the year with over a billion mobile subscribers covered. Uh, today we cover the US and Europe, and we are pushing very hard now to cover Asia as well and, and the Eastern uh, bloc. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>